Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you one way to make this group of daisy flowers. For this video I used the following images as reference. So now, let's start. The first thing I did was to create a new scene. In this case I set the units in feet. Then, I added a trunk tube generator with an absolute length of 3. And an absolute radius of 0 0.015. With the blue curve on the right I adjusted the radius at the top of this tube and I made this transition smoother. Then, I went to the Material tab and assigned the material. Here you can see how this material looks. To make this tube less straight I went to the Spine tab and increased the late noise amount. By changing to the Scribe mode you can see there are too many subdivisions. To reduce this number I went to the Segments tab and decreased the relative length amount. Right now you can see the subdivision's distribution is not uniform along the tube. This is because of this yellow curve. I changed the shape of this curve so there are more subdivisions at the top, and fewer at the bottom since it's not going to be too visible. Next, I added a branch tube generator. Here I use the absolute length instead of the relative to have more control over their size. By using the absolute value their length will be independent of the length of the parent. For the generation mode I'm using interval. Here I set the frequency to a higher value to span more of these tubes. But before continuing making edits, it's better to set the leaves first to see how they are looking. So, I'm changing these tubes to spine only so they are just the guide for the leaves. And then I immediately added a frond generator on top. As you can see, I've already imported the leaf material with some of the textures. And I also created a mesh for this leaf. I made them low poly since I'm going to add multiple plants, so it's better to save some polygons. Now that we have a better idea of the overall look I can go back to the branch tubes generator to adjust its parameters. I changed the frequency and also the boundary values. The count value you see here determines the number of leaves per step. I use the default value of 3. After that, we can increase the spread parameter and the spiral parameter so they don't look too uniform. And we can also add some variance in the position and rotation. To hide these yellow lines, we can go to the Skin tab and change the visibility value to 0. Here you'll notice that the leaves seem to be floating, so I selected the leaves and in the Geometry tab decreased the Start Boundary value to 0. Now, I'm going to change the size of the leaves at the top, so I'm going to go to the green curve of the length tubes and change the shape of this curve. Then, I decreased the Start Angle value and modified the green curve on the right as you see here. Here you can see that by default the leaves are bent downwards, this is because of the gravity parameter. Now we can add some shape to these leaves by increasing the fold, curl and roll parameters. Next, I went back to the tubes branch and here I increased the gravity value. With the green curve of the width parameter we can decrease the width of the top leaves as you see here but you need to change the parent level to the trunk tube. And with its blue curve we can change the width of different parts of the leaf. Now I'm going to start making the flower. To do this first I'm going to add an extension branch on top of the main tube. This will add a branch at the top of this tube. Then, I changed its length, and after that I used the blue curve of the radius to give it a wider shape. By creating the flower on an extension instead of the main tube we can have more control over it. And now I'm going to add a cap generator on top to simulate the disk of the flower. I reset almost all of its default values so I can start from scratch. Now, here you can see the material I made for the disk. 
To change the size of the texture, I increase the scale value. And you can use the angle parameter to rotate it. Right now we have a very low number of radial divisions, so we need to increase it. This number is controlled by the main tube, so I selected it and in the Segments tab I increased the absolute radial value. But now we have the same number of divisions at the bottom. We don't need too many in there since it's not going to be too visible. So, what I did was to take the blue curve of this absolute radial parameter and decrease the left hand point. Now, to add more volume to this disk I'm going to use the height map you see here. To apply it, I went to the Displacement tab and here I changed the source to Material. Then, with the Amount parameter I changed its strength. To have a better result I increased the number of ring segments. You can also edit the height texture to test different results. Ok, now I'm going to add the petals. For this I added a tubes generator on top of the extension generator. I used the absolute length instead of the percent of the parent. Then, I changed its type to spine only and added a frond generator on top. As you can see here I made two meshes for the petals. By default, they will be randomly assigned. For the generation mode I used absolute steps with 3 steps and 10 nodes per step. Then, I increased the first value and added some roll. I also modified the start angle and used the green curve on the right to give different values to the steps. After that, I increased the gravity parameter a bit and added some variance to it. With the sync parameter we can fix the position of these petals as you see here. Now we can give some shape to these petals by adding fold, curl and roll. Here I wanted to increase the number of radial divisions of the disc so I went to the segments tab of the main tube and increased the absolute radial value. I also noticed it was a little deformed so I went to the Displacement tab of the extension and decreased the radial amount of the displacement to zero. Here I increased the size of the disc because I thought it was too small, and I also modified some of the properties of the petals. Now, we are ready to export this plant, you can use the randomize button to create multiple instances of the model and then scatter them in your 3D software. But in this case I'll try to create a group of these plants inside Speedtree. So, to do that, I selected the main tube and changed the generation mode to absolute steps. Then, I increased the number of steps to 7 and increased the last value to separate them. With the number per step I added more of these plants. Right now this looks too uniform so I added some roll to break up this pattern. You can see that there are too many plants at the center, so to fix that, I increase the position value and then I use the green curve to separate them. After that, I added some variance to the length so they didn't look too similar. We can edit the green curve of the length and start angle to add more variation. Then, I added some variance on the start roll parameter so that way each plant has a different orientation. The last thing I noticed was that there were too many leaves overlapping at the center, so I thought about increasing the knockout amount to remove some of them but by default this will remove leaves randomly. So what I did was to use the green curve on the tree level to remove just the leaves at the center while trying to maintain the leaves at the outside of the group.
By doing this we saved some polygons as you can see in the polygon count. And now the model is finished. I then exported it to Blender and made the following renders. And that would be all. If you have a question or suggestion, you can leave it in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Subscribe if you want to support me to make more tutorials. Thanks for watching.